Hi everyone. Um, so this week um, we are going to talk about numbers. Um, we have spent a fair amount of time talking about uh, how visualizations need to put things in context. And one of the things that we're often putting in context in our visualizations is, is numbers and numerical data. Um, but before we, and before we can actually put them in context visually, of course, we have to understand how we can put them in context um, mathematically. Um, so what we're going to be covering this week is just some really basic statistical methods, um, stuff you've probably heard of. You may even, uh, you know, know how to uh, execute some of the calculations already. And, you know, the thing that I want to emphasize with this is that our objective here is not to do statistics per se, um, but to be able to do enough data analysis to understand what an individual data point means or a set of data points mean. Um, so this is really important because a lot of times, you know, we um, are, you know, we might see numbers quoted, particularly in press releases, things like that. And it's important to understand, you know, whether that, how, how significant that number is, is something very different from what would be normally expected. Is it actually within what's normally expected? Um, and and sort of make that make that assessment directly to you know basically understand what's worth reporting and what's worth highlighting um, to our readers and pursuing in some cases as potential story ideas. So um, what we're going to look at, um, I am at um, just the New York State Education website. Um, I decided to take a look at graduation rates, and so you can see that they have this already in an Excel uh, spreadsheet format. And we're going to be using two programs. Um, oh, I already have a version of this, uh, don't I? Um, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> let's try that again. Uh, let's save it and just save it as it is. Um, uh, we're going to be looking at two programs. We're going to be looking at um, something called Google Refine and now Open Refine, um, and we'll be using a little bit of Excel. So some of you may be familiar with Excel. Don't worry if you're not. Um, we're we're going to be doing some kind of quick hits on this. Um, it shouldn't involve too much uh, heavy lifting. So first of all, I downloaded my data. Now the way that I actually approach this is I tend to um, Google Refine or Open Refine. For those of you who aren't familiar with it is uh, their tagline is a power tool for dealing with messy data. There you go, right up on top there. Um, and uh, OpenRefine has a lot of really useful applications for doing sort of top level data analysis in particular. Um, it's also a very powerful tool that, that, lets, uh, that lets us do other um, more complicated forms of analysis. It is not awesome at, uh, let's see, what is this? There we go. Um, it is not fantastic at some of the statistical analysis methods, um, but uh, it's a really, really powerful tool. And so you'll see here that we are working with an Excel file, and in our little window at the bottom, you'll notice that actually this has the capacity to, um, to deal with all types of different files, including JSON files, right? So if you want to be able to do analysis on JSON data, um, Refine is actually really can help convert that into sort of a more tabular spreadsheet format because we really need that kind of format in order to do the types of assessments that we're going to be looking at today. So one of the things you'll notice here, um, I just, I didn't even open that Excel spreadsheet. Normally I probably would, but just to give you a sense of how this interface works, um, it, uh, you can see that there are actually, it's indicating to me here that my Excel file actually has four, um, actually has uh, four worksheets in it. So again, if you're familiar with Excel, you may know that you can have multiple spreadsheets uh, in one so-called workbook in one file. Um, and what I'm going to look at here are diplomas by district, right? So it's actually, the, one of the strongest features of Refine is that it gives you a lot of really useful metadata right up front. And um, so you can see here, it's giving me the name of the different sheets, file description, diplomas districts, diploma schools, diploma summary. Um, and it's even telling me how many rows are in each one. This is huge because actually a lot of times when we're looking at data sets um, and you're sort of doing data analysis, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to even know if what you have is the right thing. And sometimes one of the ways you can tell is just, is there enough information here, right? So um, I can see file description is well named, fortunately, um, but it also has only 18 rows. So even if it didn't have, you know, even if it was called worksheet one, I might be able to guess right off the bat that it wasn't the right, uh, wasn't the right 
thing to look at. Um, so as you can see, I've just unselected, um, I have just, you know, swapped my selection for the Diplomas Districts, which has uh, about 33,000 rows. Um, and I also have some, some options over here. It is treating the first line as a column header. It does it by default. Um, it lets me keep blank rows and blank cells as nulls. Pardon me, that's of course in case um, an empty value is a value, um, right, if it has significance. Um, and so now I'm just going to go ahead and say create project. Um, you may have noticed also that this is running in my web browser. It is not a web-based tool. This is actually something you download and install. Um, and uh, uh, everything that happens happens locally on your machine, so you don't have to worry about sort of the the, the privacy concerns really uh, with this. It is, I guess you could say it's safe to use even if you think you're working, even if you're working on something, um, you know, that's, that's sensitive in nature. Um, so I just kind of want to look through. So the thing that I'm interested in here is graduation rate. So, you know, let's imagine a, a mythical story. It's actually not too mythical a story. Um, when people start talking about saying something like, oh, there's been, um, you know, let's say they're criticizing a school and they say, wow, you know, I mean, this school only has a 75% graduation rate, um, but this other school has a 90% graduation rate. Um, and, you know, somebody, you know, let's say there's a debate about charter schools or something like that and talking about closing a school. Well, you know, the question is, how bad is 75%? How bad is 70%, right? Um, a statistic is being cited in a way that, um, you know, uh, that may be intending to make it sound important or egregious, right? 70% doesn't sound very good. But the question is, you know, how relatively good or bad is that really? And this is where the data analysis comes in because we really can't know how good or bad um, a number is without understanding um, the sort of universe of the data set that it comes, the, the, the broader data set from which it comes, right? So one of the questions that's reasonable to ask when somebody says, well, this has a 75% graduation rate is, well, what are the graduation rates of, let's say, comparable schools? Um, so what we happen to be looking at here is, um, is uh, data from uh, every district in New York State. Um, and so there are a few things that we want to look out for here. Now one of the greatest, one of the great features of, um, of Google Refine is that it has something called a text facet feature. So first of all I can see from this that it has the information that I'm looking for because I can go over here and I see um, graduation percent um, in this in this column. Um, these are actually reasonably well-named columns, they aren't always. Um, but I can start to see things like, you know, I see things like subgroup name, right? And so one of the things that's always important to do when you're initially uh, looking at a data set is, you know, you have to understand what information it actually contains, right? And sometimes there will be metadata files, although, um, or, or metadata attached to it, but often these, um, these, these may or may not be helpfully descriptive depending on um, the type of information that it is. And, um, and also sometimes just knowing what the breakdowns are is important, right? Um, I remember doing a data analysis once about, you know, um, fire department response and one of the questions was what type of incident was it, right? So you can instantly using this text facet, so just to show you that again, I go to facet and choose text facet on a text column and what it's doing here is it's showing me all of the possible values um, that are in uh, that are available in this data set, all of the values that are in this row. This is similar if you have experience in Excel to using a filter. Um, the reason why I do this stuff in Refine rather than Excel is because Refine is um, is a better program in many ways. Um, and um, and also because the learning curve I find is, is much better. It doesn't, it does a certain number of things. Um, there are quirks about it. For example, you may have noticed that there are only 10 rows showing here. I have a total of uh, again, about 33,000 rows. Um, and that's super useful information of itself, um, just knowing how many rows I have. But So I can see here that, that there are a lot of subgroupings that are available that I could sort of uh, do analysis on. And you'll notice also that it has in the gray text here, it has the count. So it has the number of times that each of these values appear. Now, a lot of times, if you were just writing you know, a quick article, this might be enough you know, to help contextualize um, you know, to help contextualize this. Again, imagine, you know, somebody, uh, there's an issue with asbestos being found at a school. One of the things you might, you know, instantly want to know is, well, how many other schools have this problem? Um, 
<clears throat> you know, with assuming that you have the, the right data available, you can get an answer like that very, very quickly um, from, from Google Refine. So I, I'm not interested in this sort of breakdown. I just want to look at the overall student graduation rate. So by selecting this in the left-hand margin here, I can, um, it will reduce, uh, it will reduce the cells that are in the field, reduce the rows to only those that match um, that match what I've selected. I can also, you know, choose multiple ones, right? So I can, you know, have two or three at the same time. Um, I, uh, so I've chosen all students, and you can see again up here, it says, you know, about 20, 2,752 matching rows, right? These are the rows that match my value. Um, and the other thing that I want to look at here, because there's something that says, uh, subgroup name and then we have something called membership and again just from eyeballing this I can see that there's multiple years included in fact if I look at the the aggregation name Albany City School District um, I can see that there are uh, multiple entries so I'm going to um, take a look at this so I'm going to do a text facet on this column to understand what those options are. And so now I can see that there are four sets of uh, sort of four sets of graduating classes that are included. Um, although I find it interesting that, that these two are, are distinct, and I would need to look at the methodology to understand that better. I'm going to go ahead and choose the 2006 total co cohort four-year outcome. So now what I've done is I've just taken my data and I've kind of whittled it down. What was a more complete data set? I've whittled it down to uh, to the breakdown that that I want to look at, right? I want to understand what the graduation rate is for all students, and I'll look at the 2006 uh, the 2006 cohort. I could, of course, do the analysis that I'm going to do and look at it for um, each year individually, um, but we'll start with one, obviously. Um, and so, the one of the quick things that we can do. Um, in order to work with this in, in Refine effectively, we want to sort of excerpt this data. And one of the things that I love about this program as well is that it has this export option. And again, those of you who have worked with Excel, which is still in many ways um, a standard uh, a standard tool in the industry, will appreciate that um, trying to maintain different views of data or extract different views of, of data in Microsoft Excel can be very uh, can be very difficult and you quickly end up with lots and lots of different files. One of the nice things about this is that um, is that you can actually do a lot of work directly in the same file. I'm going to choose to excise this for simplicity's sake. And when I say excise, I mean export a version of it. And you can see I can go to a lot of different um, formats here. I am going to choose tab separated. And it just pulls up this window and says, where do you want to save it? And so I'll save it here. Um, you can tell I've done this before. Um, and so now, if, if I just click back here, um, one thing that's nice is it keeps a record of everything that I've uh, been working on. And now I can go and browse to my new, uh, my new output. And you'll see that it's just very simply, um, it guesses correctly that it's a tab separator, uh, tab separated file. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up in here. So. Following this, we're going to do a little bit of, um, we're going to do some analysis, so we'll come back in a few minutes and look at how we need to do some data manipulation in order to tell a story about these numbers. Okay, see you in a second.